was the first thing you heard where you're like, oh, shit? Uh, so funny enough, <clears throat> that night um, I had brought a huge bottle of Woodford, Res Woodford Reserve. I bought a big bottle of Classe Azul. Uh, and there was one other drink that someone else bought, brought, and we had it there for after our matches for that pay-per-view. And all the, the boys in the male locker room were drinking and having a good time, and we were hugging. I have a picture of me and Jay Lethal laying on the ground together just laughing our ass off because we were just <laughs> having so much fun. I had my wife and my daughter there with me. Um, uh, Cash had his girlfriend with him. It was just such a great time. And so, of course, as soon as my match is over, I shower up. And, uh, you know, like I said, we had a couple of drinks with the guys real quick, uh, grabbed my girls, and we headed back to the hotel. Sure. Uh, I was laying in the bed, and uh, I got a text from one of the wrestlers and said, is this shit true? I had no idea what he was talking about. And, um, then right after that, I got a call from my buddy CM Punk, and he told me what happened. And I was like, you're you're lying to me, dude. There's no way that happened. He said, no. And he was covered in blood from the match. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. and You're uh, like, stop fucking with me, dude. Yeah. He, he, this, fa he, he FaceTimed me. Yeah. He FaceTimed me. I was laying in bed with my wife. And my daughter was in the uh, pull-out sofa bed. And this and, was the uh, next day? This was No, no, no. This was that night. That night, CM Punk FaceTimes you. Yeah, and he just said, hey, I just want to let you know you're going to hear some things, uh, but I wanted you to hear it from me. This is what happened. And I was like, dude, are you okay? Do you need me? I'll, I'll come right now to help you out or you know, get you cleaned up or, or you know, whatever. Uh, he said, no, 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 everything's fine. It's, you know, it's, it's died down. We're, we're good. Um, so that's when I first heard about it. And it's a tough question to ask, but you've seen a lot of reports. You've heard a lot of reports. You've talked to your friend CM Punk. Is there a lot of accuracy in the reporting of what happened, or is there a story uh, that is totally different that you know of than what people know? Um, so, obviously, I wasn't there, right? So, uh, who I perceive to be God is the only person who really, really, really knows the truth sure. because everyone's going to have their own version in their head because we've all done it before where we've made up what we perceive to be the, the truth. You know um, what I've heard that is reported. Uh, there are elements of truth in it. Um, but then there are also some things that are like that, that raise a red flag to me. Like, man, we're, it seems like we're only getting, you know, like a portion of the story or what this journalist wants to put out, right. uh, whether he, whether he has a bias or whether he has a grudge against one of the other parties, that's just how I felt. Um, but I also knew that I didn't know the whole story. You know, uh, I'm smart enough to know that um, there's the truth. And uh, what is the saying? There's a, but there's there's, a, there's an opinion what is it is it your side my side and the truth or yeah something, something like, that? like yeah. that yeah mm -hmm. and uh I, so i knew that um but i also felt that the stories that i'd heard from a few people i don't i don't feel like they would blatantly lie to me um so you know uh i i do think there are bits of truth but i also believe that um, fans have read, some of the fans have read too much into it. And uh, I think that they should uh, let what happened, let it have happened and let it die down. Because, and, you know, when it's all said and done, uh, I, I can't tell you that I know 100% of the truth. So I can't tell you if the journalists that are reporting it is 100% of the truth. Um, I know what, uh, I perceive to be the truth and from what the things that I've read and heard, there's partial truth and there's partial, uh, things that are a bit, um, exaggerated. This has been the first episode of FTR with Dax Harwood. We are coming to a close. Of course, you can follow us over on Twitter, FTR at FTR with Dax. And if you want to know how to subscribe, go ahead and go to ftrwithdax.com. And we're going to close out with one more question. And it's the kind of a question that everybody has. You know, do you think CM Punk is coming back to wrestle? Or do you think 
his days are done. And is your belief that his future with AEW finished? Man, uh, loaded, loaded, loaded questions. Um, I can't tell you any of the answers. I can tell you what I hope. And that's all I can tell you. Um, because I don't, I don't know. I don't know. There's, you know, everyone knows about, uh, the legalities of the situation. Um, and so no one's really, uh, expressing what is going to happen, what has happened, uh, and what won't happen. But I can tell you all I can tell you and all I can be truthful about, just like with the, the brawl out, I can only tell you what I can, what I, what, what I know and what I perceive to know. That's all. Um, all I know is that I hope that he comes back. Um, all I know is I feel that AEW, um, I know that I feel AEW should have the Young Bucks in their locker room. I know that I feel AEW should have Kenny Omega in that locker room. And I know that I feel AEW should have CM Punk in that locker room because with those uh, four entities in the locker room, it makes our talent roster so much deeper and it makes our talent roster so much better. And it's four guys who want to be the best. I know that regardless what any of us think personally, I know that we all want to be the best and I know we all want the best for professional wrestling. Because it's giving us, it's given us a life that we could never have otherwise. Like I know the young bucks have a beautiful family and I know their kids and they're so incredible. They're such incredible kids. I know, I, you know, and, and like I know Matt's wife, what a great woman, you know, sure, and he's yeah. allowed to give his family this lifestyle because of professional wrestling. And I know he knows that. And I know he's so proud of that. Kenny doesn't have a wife and kids, but I know that he's proud of the fact that professional wrestling has given him this life. And I know that they all know they owe it to professional wrestling. You know, they owe it to professional wrestling. They owe it to be great and they owe it to give something back. Great. Same thing with punk. He doesn't have kids, but he's got a beautiful wife. He's got an incredible life, you know? Um, and he's very fortunate to have saved his money and made the money he's made. And he's made it because of professional wrestling. And I know he knows that. And I know he knows he owes it to professional wrestling to give back to it. And this is my plea to all four guys is to please find a way to make it work. Because if we can make it work, man, we, uh, we can set up the future of professional wrestling for a long time and we can change the course of professional wrestling for a very long time. Uh, because when you think about it unselfishly, we're doing this for 20 years down the road for 30 years down the road. So the guys right. and girls can make a living. And so, you know, 30 years from now, when someone has their own Finley, you know, or someone has their own Maria, they can be proud that they are taking care of their family through something they absolutely love. And we're giving them that option. That's the whole reason that Ricky Morton and Dusty Rhodes and Dennis Condry and all these guys rode the roads for, you know, for for hundreds and hundreds of miles a day. They, they, they rode those roads and paved those roads for us. So today I can go to work one day a week, two days a week you know, at the most three days a week and I can still provide and feed for my family. And I do it because of wrestling. And that's why I know I owe wrestling so much and I love it so much because without it, I don't have any of this. And without the fans, dude, like, man, without them, none of us have anything. Uh, And so that's my plea to all four guys. 